Hi everyone. So for today's lesson, we are going to be talking about who trades forex. So let's move on to the lesson. Okay. So who trades forex? Forex is traded by two main groups of people, right? The first one are the speculators, and then the second group are the businesses or right? corporations. Okay, so speculators make up an estimated 90% of the trading volume every day, right? So these are retail traders like you and I, right? So we are known as the speculators. So we trade to make a profit by purchasing one currency and simultaneously selling another, right? So it ranges from the large banks, the fund traders, you know, trading funds. So they are probably trading 10 million units, currency units or more, right? 10 million dollars or more. And then there are the home base operators trading perhaps 10,000 units, right? $10,000 worth of currencies or less, all right? So home base operators will be people like you and I, right? The retail traders, where we're trading uh, at home on our own laptop, on our computers, on our mobile phones, all right? Then the second group will be the businesses, right? So these people trade to protect their margin on an international transaction from adverse currency fluctuations. So they include importers and exporters, governments, international fund managers, right? MNCs, right? the multinational corporations, and of course the hedge funds. Right? So for example, um, let's talk about a company in Japan. Right? So Japan, so it'll be uh, a company in Japan that does a lot of international trade. So probably the car company, right? like Toyota, uh, Nissan, you know, these uh, this company. So they will be looking to trade Forex as well to hedge against the risk, you know, just in case uh, the Japanese economy is uh, not so good, right? Or, or another country's economy is not so good. So they have to trade currencies, right? So they have to trade uh, these currencies to protect themselves against too much fluctuation, right? They don't want, they don't want the losses in the foreign exchange, right? The, Forex exchange to eat into their profits, right? Or to eat into their costs, all right? So they trade Forex as well to hedge themselves against all these uh, positions. All right, so this is the Forex market hierarchy, right? So right at the top, we got the major banks, right? So when we talk about major banks, right? It's not those banks that you can find in your own country, right? For example, in Singapore, we talk about the DBS bank or UOB bank, you know, these, these are not major banks, right? In our country, they are major banks, right? But in, in, uh, in the international, se international scene, right? We're talking about major banks. So these would be the central banks, right? The, in each country's central bank. Uh, in the US, we talk about the, the Federal Reserve, right? That's the major banks, all right? And then uh, right below the major banks, we have the EBS and Reuters, right? So basically it's the two company monopoly, right? The EBS and Reuters. Basically what the role, basically the role of these two companies are to provide the Forex feed, the Forex prices to everyone else below them, right? So just now I talked about uh, the local banks, right? So in Singapore, it's a DBS bank, you know, in another country, for example, uh, Malaysia, right? It might be Maybank, in uh, Thailand, maybe it's the uh, SCB, right? Siam Commercial Bank. Right? So the, these are the medium size and small banks. So these banks will get the Forex quotes from EBS or Reuters. All right. And then uh, below the banks, we talk about retail market makers. So these are the brokers, right? Retail ECNs, right? These are the brokers that we trade with. So you, for example, I'm using FX Primus, right? So FX Primus is a retail market maker or retail ECN, right? So they will get their quotes from the banks, right? And then we trade through them, right? And then right at the bottom of the food chain are the retail traders. That means you and I, right? We are definitely not going to EBS or Reuters to get the Forex quotes. They are not going to entertain us, right? So we get our Forex quotes from the retail market makers, right? So our Forex brokers, all right? Okay, so what tools do I need to start trading currencies, to start trading Forex? Right, first of all, you need a computer, right, or a mobile phone, right? And then you need a high-speed internet connection, 
right? Then you need a small deposit, right? So some brokers, you can start with as little as $25 to $50, right? And then uh, some brokers, the mini account start from $200, right? Or, or in some cases, you don't even need a deposit, right? Because a lot of brokers offer demo accounts, right? So you can start trading on this demo account. It's like doing paper trade, right? So do uh, do the demo trading on, the de uh, on, on these demo accounts until you are comfortable, right? And then you can switch over to live trading on a live account, all right? And then that's also, uh, you also need information, right? If you don't know how to trade, you need to find out where, uh, how am I going to trade? Uh, you need to you know you, you need to study different techniques different strategies uh, different kinds of uh, market analysis right so where can you get all this information from you can of course get it from my training series or you can also google it right on the internet right whatever information or whatever you want to find out all we have to do is very simple nowadays we just go to google type in your question and then you get your answer Alright, so why trade Forex, right? Very simple reason, because there's high liquidity, right? Why is high liquidity? It's the most liquid market in the world. The daily volume is $5 trillion, right? It's 24 hours a day, right? It, the market doesn't close. Mondays to Fridays, 24 hours, right? What, 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 what? Why is it so good to trade Forex because of high liquidity? Because this means that every time you want to buy a currency, there is someone selling it to me. And every time you want to sell a currency, there's going to be someone buying from me at that price, right? Whereas you talk about stocks, right? If you are holding, let's say, ABC company stock, and you want to sell it for $2, right? But the market price right now is $1.50, right? Nobody's going to buy it from you for $2, right? So you've got to either sell it at $1.50 or you've got to wait for the price to go up to $2 in a few months' time before you can sell it at $2. But for Forex, whatever the current price is, the moment you click the buy or the sell, there is another party willing to do business with you, all right? So it's not correlated with other investments, right? So this means that... Uh, you know, it can't be controlled, right? Because the volume is so huge, $5 trillion a day, it can't be controlled, right? So no one can control a particular currency, okay? And then it's done online, right? So with the internet, you can do it online now. There's low transaction cost, typically less than 0.1%, right? So some brokers, you can even trade with $0 transaction cost, right? Zero transaction cost. And then, of course, it's Forex is low margin, high leverage. So this means that there's a potential to make huge profits. But at the same time, you can uh, lose quite a bit of money as well. All right. And then finally, there's no fixed lot size. Right. So when you trade stocks, you need to buy one lot, two lot, three lots. Right. One share, two share, three share. All right. Whereas in currencies, you can, you know, there's no fixed lot size. You can buy 1.4 lots. Right? You can buy 10.7 lots. You can buy 0 0.3 lots. Right? So there's no fixed lot size. All right? So this comes to the end of uh, today's topic, who trades Forex. The next, uh, in the next lesson, we'll be talking about how to trade Forex. All right? So I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.